magnify the name of the Lord. Thank him indeed. Bless his name. He's wonderful. And he does even the ones that we don't think can be done. Glorious God. Thank God for life. Thank God for the unseen things that it does, does for you. There are many things we have no idea of, but it's doing them. Sometimes we are only concentrated on the ones we are able to see. What of the very serious things that you don't see, you don't know? Thank God for all of them, for even more than you can imagine or think of. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for another time of fellowship. But first of all, thank you that you have given us lives. And thank you for everyone who is born again, who belongs to you, for Jesus. Thank you for the revelations we have concerning life. Thank you for your patience with us tolerating us, accepting us, counting us amongst your beloved. Thank you again for today. May the questions of our hearts be answered. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, somehow we have managed to finish with May. By Friday, May is over. And how many people know that the year is almost over by that? By the time you are saying June, <laughs> everything has finished. Mm. But that means God has kept you. The way things have been, how many people believe that they would have lived the way they live today? Sometimes I think it's a wonder that life goes on. How does it go on? Can you really say how? Nobody can. Oh God makes life go on. He has his own way that we don't no. We still think of the business of miracles with Jesus and the 5,000 people that ate five loaves of bread. The little money you have, how does it feed you? That's the thing that we don't take into consideration. <laughs> Life has not finished. Given the way the resources are, there should have been no life by now. But the life continues. No change. But things have changed very badly. <laughs> very, very badly. What you bought uh, for maybe 9,000 Naira in November last year, it is impossible to buy it for 20,000 today. It will rate from 30,000 and above. The same thing. But your income has not increased. <laughs> so what increased? God. Simple. So when you look at the miracle of the 5,000, remember that it's happening in your own life. It's not only in the scripture. It's happening on a daily basis. We are direct beneficiaries of it. There's nothing that has not gone four times over. Transportation, everything. The thing just keeps going. But we are alive. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is why we have to sing and praise God at all times, man. Can we just stand up and thank God? Thank God for your life. Thank God for the provisions that he has made for you. You cannot say how you have 
and arrived at today. And you are still healthy. Your life has not destroyed. Your children, when you have children, they are still going to school. The, thing, the basic things you used to do, you are still doing them. Just thank God. Bless the name of the Lord. He is more than faithful. It didn't happen because you prayed. It happens because God is righteous. And he makes everything work out for good for his own children. The quality of your life has not diminished. Meanwhile, the resources to you have completely diminished. Magnify the name of the Lord. God is wonderful. God is faithful. Beyond your understanding, beyond every calculation, God is faithful indeed. same income as you. Might even be in a better position than you. But look at the person's life and check your own out. <laughs> and if they ask the person, he says, it's because of the situation is correct. So why does God make your own difference? You know that thing that the scripture says, all things, even the worst of things, work together for the good of the child of God. That's all. You belong to God, that disaster works for your good. No matter how disastrous it is, it turns out for your good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Who has questions? Today is question day. Mm. Yes, go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My question is from last week. Wednesday Bible study. Mm. 
about the length of days. Mm. And I had put it up. Unfortunately, nobody asked it for me. You see, nobody I want to ask for your for you. Uh, I couldn't come, so I put it online. Yeah, everybody know. <laughs> <laughs> that so, means your voice disappeared. Okay, you were not here. Yes, we well, are, yeah. you asked the online people. That is our own wala. <laughs> So, but the question is from the studies, we talk about a child dying at 100. No, I didn't talk about it. The, the Bible says. Ah, very good. And then you talk about a sinner dying at 120. Now, my question is, and then there was this thing, um, not there was, there is, that uh, you said, Sam, that you were talking about our years are 70s and 80s mm. due to our own incorporating and everything. I want to ask, what happened in the case of the son of Jeroboam? And what is his name? Is it Ahijah or Abijah? Mm. He did what? Because God says he's going to die because he's the only righteous one. Uh. So, what, that's, I just want to know what, what happened to his own case. But have you ever heard the saying that exceptions prove the rule? Have you ever heard it? No. Exceptions prove the rule. Yes, sir. Very good. That's exactly what happened. Where there is a rule, there are exceptions to it. Some grammar, they will say extenuating circumstances. Things that are different. That was a household destined for destruction. You leave that child there, eventually he will become like them. So the best thing, remove him. So those things, we have to consider things according to where they are. Things are not like one is always equal to one. It never happens, especially in spiritual issues. It doesn't work like that. Because that also answered my second question. Mm. So there's only to, I wanted to ask that. What about the righteous man? The righteous? A righteous man. Hmm? A righteous man. Uh, doing what? That is being taken by God. And then that person could be like 50, 60. What happens? Did I talk about exceptions? And that's no, why I just no, said I'm that coming. you... Uh, hold it. I have one thing that runs in my mind at all times. If, I will, if by tomorrow morning I'll commit something that will send me to hell, I'll prefer that God text me today. I don't need to wait till 100. Because by the time I want to wait till 100, I'm going to hell. So if I am going to get a throne today, I am gone. So you know the that I may die the date of the righteous man. No, and that prayer, who <laughs> prayed? The, the old prophet, who was a blatant liar. Uh, I don't pray that one. <laughs> I'm okay. not part of that prayer. Because it sounds I was worried. like a wonderful prayer, but who prayed it? Okay. Bury me in his grave. <laughs> that did that dead of what kind of grave? When he told that guy a lie, and the foolish boy went to die. <laughs> It's very good you mentioned it. We fall for every kind of disaster that is meant. It's the man of God that said it. Shut up your mouth. You know what the scripture says? Believe not every spirit. Do what? Test them to see if they are from God. So because the fellow answers man of God, you must believe what he says. Or because he performed a miracle in the morning, so in the evening you have to believe him, not me. I'll never teach anybody to do it. At all times, test the spirit to be sure. All right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, my question is coming from First Peter three nineteen. First Peter three nineteen. Uh -huh. By whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Mm. Now. My, my question is, there's no salvation after death. death. So why did he go and preach to the spirit? Was it to save them? What was the impact of preaching to them 
after the, to the spirit. Were those spirits there when Jesus died on the cross? No, they were not. Okay, so would they have, if God is impartial, should they have the same opportunity like you? Yes, but no one was available at the time who spoke to them, but they refused to enter the... Was that salvation or entering the boat? It was entering the boat. Okay. There's a world of difference from the time Jesus died. If God is a just God, as the scripture says, everybody, starting from the beginning, has the same opportunity. So nobody goes to hell and says, well, I wasn't given the opportunity. No. If you want to go to hell, okay, you decide to. There's a level playing ground for everybody. So who goes to hell goes on his own conceits. Not because God didn't give the opportunity. That is why the opportunity was given to those who had gone before. He went to the cross and went straight to speak to them. If not, God would have condemned people when he didn't give them the opportunity to repent. But he gave them the opportunity so the condemnation didn't come upon them by force. Question. Let's get the questions over. Still on that particular uh, matter, you know, even after Jesus died, the gospel did not spread everywhere immediately. Like Africa, like maybe West Africa here, yeah, there were places that the gospel, like for example, they said in Nigeria, it came with the, it did, uh, uh, which of this missionary, I think in the 18th century, that came to, Africa, uh, to West Africa, especially Nigeria, and brought the gospel. So there were people in all these places that never heard the word of God. And we are talking about the death of Jesus Christ, and he had already brought salvation. And people were there who had never heard for centuries, and they have died. How do we uh, look at those people if Jesus had already gone to hell and resurrected, and these people did not have the opportunity to hear the word of God? Why do you think that God does not have a way of giving them the same opportunity? Unless you can prove to me that God is not just, okay, then I'll agree with you. But to all intents and purposes, God is a just God. God, God. God will always be a just God. Otherwise, we'll be in trouble. Say, I am the Lord. Behold, I am the Lord. I change not. That is why the children of men can survive. Are there questions coming? Don't remember your question after the Bible study. Praise the Lord. Another question I have is this. What changed? When Peter had that trance and the animals came from heaven and, Peter, and he said, pick and eat. And he said, no, I can't eat this because they are unclean. And God told him, don't say anything I've made is unclean. But in, if you look at the Old Testament, God actually told them that those animals were unclean and they shouldn't eat it. And anybody that even touches it will remain unclean till 6 o'clock. So what changed? Jesus. You said God does not change. Jesus, so Jesus died. 
And that is why the door was open for us to enter. Otherwise, we were outsiders. And by the death of Jesus, there was a door open that we can enter. That whole trance had nothing to do with animals, but it had everything to do with the Gentiles. That was the first acceptance of the Gentiles into the commonwealth of Israel. And by extension into heaven. But that is why the New Testament also says there is nothing that is forbidden to be eaten. Don't eat this, don't eat that. Then that whole story has ended. And anyway, there is so much of hypocrisy about what we don't eat. You know the countries of the world that will never, will not like to eat Take pigs, for instance. How can they eat pigs? But boy, check out, they eat more pigs than anybody else. Ham, sausage, hot dog, all of those things are pig. <laughs> but those are the same people that will tell you, ah, you can't eat pig. But they eat the thing on a daily basis. I don't know how many of us have eaten in Chinese restaurant before. You have? The purple-looking liquid, that is lizard, man. A buck lizard. <laughs> okay. You will enjoy the thing. Ah, Chinese. Oh, sauce. Add the sauce. Lizard. <laughs> so leave that matter. <laughs> there is nothing that... that some part, is it Australia or somewhere, they eat cockroaches. Cockroach. Okay. Don't leave the matter. People eat everything. That, that restriction, it had gone since. Eat what you think you can eat. Full stop. Not by restriction. So I can eat snake. Ah, but people do eat snake. What is my business with them? <laughs> When I was in Benue, uh, when, then it used to be Benue, which is now Benue and Kogi. And where we were, I was in charge of a farm. And then one day there was this noise. I was wondering what happened there. Fire had burnt part of the farm. So I went there. What was going on? Big snakes. The people were able to catch them. Uh, okay, this guy. Correct. You think? No, but walk closed. There was no way I could get people back to work. Walk closed that day. They were celebrating, very happy. It wasn't a minor feast. <laughs> okay. There is no restriction in the scripture as per what you should eat or should not eat. That used to be in the olden days, but that had finished. Yes. Praise the Lord. Apostle, there is this uh, chapter in the Bible, uh, Second Kings chapter 20. Hezekiah is often depicted as a man that had always been faithful, walking with God. But when he was told by Isaiah that he would die, he pleaded with God. And his life was extended for 15 years. During this time, he did something that he's supposed to have pleaded. The Babylonians came to visit. And he showed them the king's treasury and, and the house. And the temple, the gold, everything. When those people left, Isaiah came to him again. Who were those people he mentioned? He told you, your people will go into exile. They will become the eunuchs and all that in the land of the Babylonians. Instead of pleading as he pleaded for his own life, he said the word of the Lord is good. And actually after that, Israel was taken into exile and they spent 70 years. Was that quite a good example of loyalty? 
good example of what? Loyalty. Huh? Loyalty or faithfulness to God. Okay, I see. I think the man had less bad belly than you. No, but that's the truth. What concerned the man? The prophet had said that the thing will not happen in your own days. That's all. <laughs> he had his 15 years, so no problem. After the 15 years, whatever will happen, if the people like, they can plead for themselves. If they don't like, that's their problem. That's why I say he had better bad belly than you. We all would do the same thing. Uh, the thing, it won't happen in my days. Yeah, okay, thank you, I'm going to heaven. <laughs> That's exactly what he did. There's nothing about being faithful or unfaithful in the matter. As a follow-up to that, uh, we were not there anyway, but I am thinking aloud, wouldn't it have been better he died off at that 15 years being added to add trouble to his descendants? How? That he should die before the... He should have died at that time. Instead when? of sending his descendant to exile by his own act. God had given him for 15 years. The gifts of God are... Did you ever read your Bible? I read. But if he never pleaded, if he never pleaded, God wouldn't have given him. That's, that's what you are doing now is conjecture. You were not in his heart and you never know the reasons that he that came to him for it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. If it is something that is happening here, uh -huh, you can ask the person, why don't you act, plead for yourself? My, I am grateful that he asked that question. That thing has been on my mind. Mm. That guy was asked specific questions mm. and he answered correctly. He was not hiding anything. What is exactly his crime? What did he do wrong? Who's who? who? The Ezekiah. What did he do wrong? When? What did he said? Who were those people? He told the prophet who they were. What? what? What he did wrong is that he had no reason to expose the things of Israel to. What do what do you call them? The heathen. Very okay. good. How can he carry them into the house of God? His head was correct. <laughs> he did something very terrible. But that's not the reason for which they went into exile. It's just that they had done very badly, badly. He managed to be good by himself. And God knew that the sentence had already been passed. That is why God told him in the first instance, you don't need to hang around, sort out yourself, you are going. If God came to you and said, <clears throat> get ready, you are dying, what he says is, I'm giving you the opportunity to get to heaven. That's what God told him. But he didn't want to go, God said, okay, hang around for 15 years. That was not going to change the sentence on Judah. They will still go. Yes. <clears throat> Even with that, the 15 years also brought his son, Manasseh, uh, that was one of the most wicked kings in Israel. It's not the 15 years that brought it. They had always... Don't forget that the standard of sinfulness in Israel, as far as kings were concerned, was who? Okay. Very good. Was it during the 15 years? The 15 years had nothing to do with who Manasseh decided to be. The man was himself. That's all. All right. Because Jeroboam was the standard. And that was way, way, way long before anybody else showed up. Who else has a question? I have a question. The Bible says in my father's house, when Jesus was speaking, I ha there are so many mansions. Are they real mansions, or it was, it was, uh, it was, 
He was, he was just joking. <laughs> no, I don't understand. <laughs> was he trying to refer to something else using mansion? So, okay, did he say something like mansion? No, no, he said there are many did mansions. Did he say something that resembled mansions? No. So what is your problem? Was it a parable? Your problem is that you are not willing to believe him. <laughs> no, I am. Okay. So... <laughs> If he says there are mansions, there are mansions. <laughs> Whatever Jesus said, you know what he said? Not one word of the word of God will do what? <laughs> he stands for how long? Forever. I used to say there are people who live in the mansions, but there are those who will sweep the mansions for, the, for those who occupy. Huh? They will be sweepers of the mansions. Will they be dead? Uh, okay, they will be alive on earth and go to sweep mansion. <laughs> Have you not read the scripture that says some people will enter heaven? Like those burnt by fire. Uh -huh. Those ones who sweep, in fact, those ones who sweep the streets. <laughs> they will do the manual works that are available. You can't just get crashed into heaven. You are not on the same level with the fellow who is wearing crowns. There are people that will wear crowns, there are people that will wear nothing. They, they just managed get crash. <laughs> and unfortunately, very unfortunately, most of those who will get crash are pastors. No, but that's the truth. There will be more pastors who manage to enter than the other people. They will enter and find that the people that they thought they were pastoring, those ones got the crowns. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Let all of us not be anxious to be teachers. For everyone who is a teacher will be judged how many times? Double. Very good. Go ahead. <laughs> Apostle, but the, the scripture says, The 24 angels, everybody has wait, seen. Wait, will there be those wearing crowns? Will everybody wear crowns in heaven? Very good. There is distinction. Oh. And wherever there is distinction, there is somebody doing the menial job. So, so Peter, I do gatekeeper. Even, even the angels that you are talking about, you have ash angels. You have angels that guard the throne. They are all manner of greats. Don't look for how you pass through fire into heaven. It won't help. There's room for upgrade. <laughs> upgrade. <laughs> Once you cross, that is the end point. At, at the level you cross, that's the level you stay permanently. The Lord is good. Because you have entered heaven, you have not seen fire, so you should be happy. But by the time I cross there, then I see you with a crown. I would like you. And me, I don't have the crown. Okay, we would have lost consciousness when we go to heaven. The Lord, yeah. Okay. That's all. Because that would be envy. The Lord yeah. is good. So those kind of spirit will not near. Yes, it's not part of the gift in of the Holy heaven, Fruit. In heaven there is consciousness. Why did angels go to fight for the corpse of Moses? Because Satan was carrying it here on earth, no? So why did they fight for it? Why didn't they just leave it? No, sir. Uh, Are there the judges to determine who goes to heaven or hell? What I'm saying is that there is conscious action, even in heaven. Mm. <laughs> but unclean is if you get If you get crashed into heaven... You'll be smelling your smoke that burnt you. <laughs> the other fellow who goes as a superstar wears five crowns. You can never be on the same level. 
wherever there is hierarchy, there are much benefits to the higher person. And the other fellow will be without benefits. It can be sweet. Yes, ask your question. Daddy, please, when Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, did he drink water? You read your Bible and let me know if he drank water. I am not going to answer that one. You read your Bible and let me know if it is if he did. Who has a question? I didn't tell anybody to tell him what he has to read it from his Bible and tell me. So don't tell him. Any other question? Are you looking? Praise the Lord. Yeah, I, there's something, when I read the scripture, there's this particular, that particular one you mentioned that the angel Michael and Satan were fighting for Moses' body. Moses' spirit was already in heaven. Why were they fighting for the body? What is his body will turn to, to no, dust? Wait, wait, wait. There is a spirit, there is a soul, there and is there's the body. body yes. uh -huh. So where was the soul? It had gone to heaven. According to you. When a man dies, the thing that returns to God is what? His spirit. spirit. Not the soul. The soul passes through judgment. And what that tells you is that God had forgotten him. And the thing I used to say is this. If Moses, that God said, is the meekest man on the face of the earth, angels had to fight to take him to heaven. Now, is there any angel that will fight for me if God decides to abandon me? So I should be careful with myself. <laughs> if they had to fight for Moses, and I know that there is none that will fight for me, I have to be careful. Because if God says, that is the end, you are gone. <laughs> I think it's some scripture that should make everybody think Fear. soberly. What would happen to me if that was Moses? The one that God gave all the testimony that anybody could give. So, watch out for you. That means God is not a joker. Was another question. So when you want to live your life, check how you are living. God can just forget you anyhow, anytime. <laughs> God has a standard that is not compromisable. That whole thing that we believe that somehow God will do it, it somehow will not exist to. That's why I said there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Those who thought they have made it, well, they finally find, find that they didn't make anything. That's where that story comes from. Those who are crying and say, Lord, but I perform many miracles in your name. Say, ah, yes, correct. But anyway, I don't know you. So, bye bye. <laughs> well, except you had Angel Michael coming to fight for you. Okay. Me, I know that the Angel Michael wouldn't like to fight for me, so there's no need <laughs> to look in that direction. Now that you have the opportunity to rectify things about your life. When it reaches that level, three bad. Yes, do we have questions? Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, if I lent up. If the length of our life as Christians it should be up to 120, a Christian that dies may be due to ignorance or carelessness before then. Will God use that against him or her? 
no, wait, oh, wait, wait. Give her the mic because she has to answer my own question. Uh, <coughs> did God say He will appoint you as one of the judges to judgment? Eh? <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is simple question. Did God say He will appoint you as one of the judges to judge men? He will rule and reign with Him. I don't. I am talking about judging. I'm not talking about ruling or railing. Will he appoint you a judge? No, sir. No. Uh, so why are you asking me about judgment? Because <coughs> I think it's a costly error or ignorance. Uh, wait. What happens to the people who are in ignorance? What happens to them? God overlooks. God overlooks. Ah. <laughs> but not, not costly ones. <laughs> no, wait. In ignorance, they, what? what happens to them? Pardon? Huh? I didn't hear. Huh? I didn't hear you. In, those in ignorance, what happens to them? They are destroyed. Okay. I hope. Very good. My people, the world is perish. Is it physical or spiritual? In heaven, are you talking spiritual or physical? Because you see, uh, there's one day I told a pastor that thing. I said, have you ever read the scripture that says, my people perish for lack of knowledge? I said, as far as I am concerned, what that thing means is this. I know, I should know this is fire. But somehow, I refuse to know, or I refuse to take the fire seriously. I put my hand, God will not stop my hand from burning. It's not that it will burn, God will allow the hand to destroy completely, or to be destroyed. So, by the time I want to deal in ignorance, when God expects me to know. Now, you are going to look at different people. If I claim to be a child of God, and I am reading my scripture and studying my scripture and relating with the Holy Spirit, I should know the one that I shouldn't do. Because at that point, if I do it, it is deliberate. It's not ignorance. But the fellow who is not can do any kind of thing and get away with it. Ignorance. But you know who perishes? God didn't say everybody perishes because of ignorance. My people. Once you belong to God, you deal with ignorance, sorry. But the other person will do worse than what you can imagine. Nothing happens. Because that truly is ignorance. But in my own case, as a child of God, it is no longer ignorance. It's deliberate. And I know what it says in Hebrews. If we deliberately sin, <laughs> So don't go, go and kill yourself and say, well, there will be ignorance. It won't work wrong. No, sit down, please. Or oh, you have another question. Uh -huh. The ignorance is applicable to the person outside, not the person inside. Yes? Go ahead. Uh, apostle, no, per adventure. I'm just saying per adventure. Somebody is a Christian. Take that thing closer to your Somebody mouth. Somebody is a Christian, and then the person through carelessness or anything, now dies. The Bible says the wages of sin is dead. Can't God, I don't know, I'm not judging for God, but wouldn't that still make room for the person? He has paid the wages of his ignorance, his carelessness. Was it the physical death or second death? No, I mean physical death. Uh, physical death, everybody will die, not necessarily... When he talks about the wages of sin being dead, you are talking about the second death. Okay, second death. Mm. You don't know more now. <laughs> Daddy, mm. I checked the Bible. No, you check, you check more than one chapter of the Bible. 
so that you get all of the stories together before you answer. Have you heard? Yes. Uh -huh. So don't jump to an answer by one. <laughs> all the other places that write is about the same thing. Any other question? Because we are coming to a close if there are no questions. I just want to share something. Uh, there's this story from uh, the late Rehan Bonke's crusade of a man that died and by mercy at the crusade uh, through Rehard Bonke, he came back to life. Now, this is the story that he told. It was in an accident. And shortly before he was to pass on, he knew that he was going to die. And so he confessed all of his sins. And to him, if he died at that time, he knows that he was going to obtain mercy. Since he had the opportunity at that moment to realize that he will die as a result of this accident. He prayed and asked for forgiveness. But when he crossed to the other side, he was told that he cannot go because there, there is sin that is hanging on his neck. Now, before he left home that morning, he had a quarrel with his wife that he could not settle before the accident. But before he died, he asked that God should forgive him of all the, of his sins. And that is what he was told. That unforgiveness. Once you cannot forgive somebody, there is no way you can also obtain forgiveness. So that prayer of God, forgive me, and the things that God has forgiven him, did not count. But by mercy, he came back. Why am I bringing it on? That our unforgiveness at no time, yes, I can confess my sins to God. God, please forgive me of this that I have done. But if there is any little unforgiveness, we will not obtain forgiveness. Please, let us bear that in mind. Unforgiveness is, I mean, it, it can take us to the other side. Maybe I have done wonderful things. But because I refuse to forgive somebody, I can find myself in hell. That is why I, I just said, let me share that. Please, let us not think that the sin of unfor I mean, unforgiveness is something to, to toil with. I can't forgive him no matter what he has done. Please, I am doing it against myself. Praise the Lord. Now, let me say something. Your conclusion is correct, but the story itself is wrong. Those stories go against this grain of the scripture. I went to heaven and they said, go back and repent. That's a bland, tanned lie. People who have those experiences, they come up with all manner of hallucinations and they will blow up their hallucinations as being correct. If anybody goes to heaven and they say, well, yeah, go back. When you gain forgiveness, you come so that you don't, don't, don't go to hell. If God is a just God, he will do it for absolutely Everybody. Those stories are always, always wrong, 100%. Completely wrong. Now, the issue of forgiveness is this. Jesus said, if you don't forgive the fellow who sins against you, your Father in heaven will never forgive you. So the issue of saying, I pray. And anyway, if that story was correct, that man prayed that God should forgive him of all of his sins, which will include He's having not forgiven the wife. So was that one separated from the others? Those stories are hallucinations that are never, ever correct. They go against the scripture. Anybody who says, I went there, and they said, go back and repent, that's a lie. That can never be God. The scripture has no room for such a thing and teaches against it. So let's be careful with those stories. When they come, they have fictions of hallucinations. They are not wrong. But forgiveness, that one is not optional. If you think there's anybody who won't forgive, well, never mind. Get to hell. Or you say, well, I've forgiven him, but I will never forget. Wait. When you arrive, you will discover that God never forgot your sin. 
<laughs> and if you didn't forget your sin, what will happen to you? Because it says, forgive the person as God in Christ forgave you. Did God forgive you and keep record of it? So don't keep record of that thing. You keep the record, too bad. Your own record is in heaven. When you arrive there, you'll be confronted by it. There is not one thing that anybody does, does to me that is, in, that is sufficient reason for me to go to hell. If I want to go to hell, it should be because of what I decide to do. Not because somebody did something, so I'll go to hell because of you. I lie. I don't need to be told about forgiveness. I've forgotten you, plus your so-called whatever you did. And there is nothing to forgive. I've forgotten you. Oh, he's not worth it. Somebody said, you are suffering already in this world. And then you decide that you will go to hellfire because of another person. No. If I have to go to hell, it should be something that I've done so that I know hey, I take myself to hell. Not because you strangulated me and I say I can never forget. What's the meaning? If you strangulated me, did I die? If I died, I wouldn't be around to talk about forgiving or not forgiving. There are things that we must, must not do, must not. I think I used to say something about an Assemblies of God pastor, sectional leader. That is big time. And he told me, there's some story that he came to tell, some complicated story. Complicated story. I said, but there's a problem with your uncle that you... Uh, he said, ah, that my uncle. He mentioned how many people the man killed. Killed his former wife. His last one that he killed was his most, uh, whatever, the only son that he had. He said, I can never forgive him. Yeah, I was shocked. I said, but you are a sectional leader. That's what you say. You say, yes, even if Jesus comes, I cannot forgive you. But that's where our discussion ended. <laughs> because I found that that was, in fact, he even said, even if I'm going to the hottest part of hell. So what was I going to talk with him about? <laughs> we were on different trajectories. He was heading in, into hell. Me, I was looking for how to go to heaven. So... <laughs> There was no compromise points. So forgive, oh, as God forgave you, except you decide that God has not forgiven you. <laughs> then hold everything against everybody. Any other question? Yes. Please, somebody died and came back to life. Is it that what transpired between the time the fellow died and came back to life? The problem. Whatever is happened there, the fellow cannot remember. The problem is this. People who come out from it, they have a whole lot of hallucinations. And they will say, if you are not following the scripture, you will believe the thing. And the scripture is the standard of life in, he in heaven, on earth, everywhere. And the scripture cannot be broken. Those hallucinations, no way, they don't hold. That's what they are. Okay, they wouldn't know that it's hallucination. That's their business. I should know. Okay. You should know when you read the word of God. Compare whatever anybody is saying to the word of God. That's the standard. You will not be judged by anybody's story. You will be judged by what? The word of God. <laughs> so somebody shows up. I am an angel. The Lord says you will jump seven times before you get salvation. I'll tell the angel to disappear. <laughs> the scripture does not support it. Whatever is not supported by the scripture is a lie. Daddy, this is only the part, it's only a part of the chapter that says... That did what? That said... There are too many people confusing him. Allow him to talk now. That is only a part of it, the chapter that says how Jesus passed for 40 days and 40 nights. Okay. The rest is something different. But what is really your problem? You want to fast for 40 days and 40 nights? No, I'm just asking. <laughs> just asking if Jesus drank water. Is that the fasting. only place in the Bible that you saw the story? Only that one place? Check if there's another place. 
<laughs> like daddy, they didn't talk about water as I was reading it. They didn't talk about. Check. They only said that he was. Check hungry. if there's another place that mentioned anything. Anybody has a question? No questions? All right, let's stand up. The bottom line of all of this is, is take your Bible reading and study very seriously. It's your guide to life. There are too many things that run around in the name of in fact, in these days, a good revelation. <laughs> Disasters that are called revelations, don't follow them. You will get to hell straight. Check your own word of God. You know, uh, in the thing that I used to be, or in the profession that I was engaged in this, there are two words that you write in an agreement, and it's called as is. I give you this thing as is. That is, there's no interpretation to it. There is no explanation to it exactly the way it is. Leave the revelations, take the scripture as is. Hey, shh, shh. Go, two of you. If I hear your noise, take the scripture as is, not as interpreted. Somebody will read the scripture and say, this is the revelation I have. Correct though, follow the scripture as is. Jesus said, it's the word that will judge you in the end. Take it, that is the sacrosanct thing to take. Let's pray in that the Holy Spirit will help us to stand on the word of God, no matter where we are and no matter who is saying anything. The people of Berea, no matter what Paul said, they will check the scripture. If it does not agree, it is over. That God will help you to do his bidding at all times. And may the light of God shine upon you that wherever you are, whatever you are engaged in, you will see the direction of God and follow that one. Because there are too many things in this world that look like nothing, but in the end they are destructive. That issue of ignorance. I shouldn't get involved in some things I should know by the help of the Holy Spirit. This thing, don't go there. This one, don't do. This company, don't keep. We are keeping too many companies that are not good for us. Sometimes can be financially benef beneficial, socially beneficial, but it won't take you to heaven. Avoid that company. Keep away from it.
Because even the life that you live, if God is now giving you the life, you won't live. It will be gone. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you for this evening. I pray that whatever little we have heard, much more will be preached in our hearts. Holy Spirit, reach every single one of us and help us indeed. You are a helper. Without you, we are not going anywhere. I pray that there should be such a heart in us and there indeed will be such a heart in us to obey you in all things, that it may be well with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll give our offering. There is joy, joy, joy in the presence of the Lord, singing hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Thank you for teaching us, Holy Spirit. And thank you for this opportunity that we give unto the work of God, giving unto God directly. Lord, may this offering work for the kingdom, bringing men to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And may it be that we offer ourselves to you fully, that the offerings will also bring much blessings, multiple blessings, abundant blessings to our lives in Jesus' name. And we want to thank you again for being faithful to us, being accepting of us, showing us your tender mercies and taking care of us in the midst of everything, in the midst of every hardship. You have shown yourself strong on our behalf. We say blessed be your name forever and ever in Jesus' name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore.